the inguinal ligament connects the anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle. The lacunar ligament is triangular in shape and extends from the inguinal ligament to the pubic tubercle. The Cooper's ligament is the periosteum of the superior pubic ramus and the lacunar ligament gets attached there. The idiopubic tract is a condensation of tissue from the anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle and it lies in between the inguinal ligament and the iliac vessels to fill in the space. The traditional exposure is done by an incision half an inch above and parallel to the medial two-thirds of the inguinal ligament. One deepens the incision up to the external oblique and then incises the external oblique in line with its fibers going into the external ring. The flaps of the external oblique are raised and the cord comes into view. The cord is lifted off to expose the posterior wall and the Hasselbeck triangle. The indirect sac is dissected, contents are reduced and herniotomy done. Many different procedures have been described for the repair. McVay repair, wherein one sutures the conjoint tendon to the inguinal ligament. Bassini repair is the same as McVay but in addition, a relaxing incision is given on the rectus sheath. Lytle's repair, where the internal ring is narrowed. Shoulders repair, where the fascia transversalis is divided, creating an upper and lower flaps, which are then overlapped, followed by a bassini repair. Darn repair is the same as a McVay, but there is no opposition of tissues, instead a simple darning is done between the tissues. Lichenstein's mesh repair, where a patch of mesh is put over the hernial defect. A plug and patch repair, where in addition to a Lichenstein's, a protein cone is placed into the internal ring. Once the hemostasis is achieved, the closure is performed and this completes the operation. For a paraumbilical hernia, a curvilinear skin incision is made, deepening the incision on either side of the sac to reach the rectus sheath. Skeletonize the sheath and then approach the sac medially. One does not start from the sac because the contents might get injured either during the skin incision or the dissection. After opening the sac, reduce the contents and excise the sac. Repair the defect primarily if it is less than 4 cm in size or use a mesh if the defect is larger than 4 cm in size. For a femoral hernia, there are three different approaches. The low approach of Lockwood deals with the sac below the femoral canal. The high approach of McEvity deals with the femoral canal by opening the peritoneum as a formal laparotomy. The mid approach of Lothesen opens the inguinal canal and fascia transversalis to deal with the femoral hernia.